Hello and welcome to That Deacon on YouTube. Between May and August, all across the United States and now even in different parts of the world, you will see GLBTQ Pride events. Most people know it as Gay Pride. For a number of years, I marched in a few of these events representing the Episcopal Church. I have marched in West Hollywood a number of times. I have marched uh, down in Long Beach, and I've been active with the Orange County Pride Festival. I was looking through my personal YouTube channel. The uh, best way to describe it would be a video junk drawer. I had no rhyme or reason. It was long before uh, I thought of having a YouTube channel. So in that particular channel you'll find old music videos of mine, uh, particular dance works I had staged a long time ago. I will upload some of my music and you'll find various promos for the coming out service that I had done over the years. And one time I brought my camera with me to Long Beach for the Gay Pride March. For a number of years, I was happy, very happy to serve as deacon of the table with our suffragan bishop at the time, the Right Reverend Mary Glasspool. Um, bishop Mary also um, was efficient at our coming out service for a couple of years. So uh, we seem to have always been put together at these various pride events and it was always a joy. So I brought my camera with me one year and I asked people why they marched. And here is what they had to say. I'm marching because you gotta give me hope. Why am I marching today? Because I want you to know that God loves you and there's a church that welcomes you. No matter who you are, we have a place for you. I'm marching because church. I love to see everyone get together and show their We're part. marching for social justice and equality. 34 years of an engagement is long enough. Can we get married yet? I'm marching for justice and equality too. I'm with the 34 years guy. I'm marching because I'm a grandmother. I love all my grandchildren and I believe God loves all his children too. We need to celebrate everyone and show that everybody's in this together and show that we're all human beings. We're all loved by God and because it's fun. We're marching today for the, to represent the Episcopal Church of Los Angeles, the Los Angeles Diocese, and to, to, show, to demonstrate everyone how much we love God and to share our pride in today. Beautiful day. And we're here to support the Episcopal Church in showing the world that it's inclusive and all-embracing church. I'm marching to show God's love of all of us. Wasn't that a fun video? And the one thing I love about representing the Episcopal Church out in Long Beach especially is that you noticed that it was a full conglomeration of parishioners and souls talking about the full inclusion of humanity, not just gay people or, or bi people or transgender people. It was all about the love and the inclusion and the overwhelming love that embraces all of us as people following the way. And I think that spirit showed up in that video quite well. You could also notice that we got a big hand as we marched down Ocean Boulevard in Long Beach. In fact, the Gay Pride Parade in Long Beach is taking place tomorrow on Pentecost Sunday. Speaking of Pentecost, I had the occasion to have two Pentecost experiences while participating at a Pride Parade. And let me share them with you. The first one happened in Long Beach. I believe it was back maybe 2002, 2003. 
and we were doing our thing marching down the boulevard. And as we were marching, I looked over to my right, and of course we're waving to everyone, and we have our signs, and we're doing our thing, and just enjoying the experience. And I looked over, and I saw these three young guys. They had to have been either freshmen in college, or maybe high school seniors. They were upper teens, maybe. And I looked over, and two of them weren't particularly interested in what we had to say being a church. But then there was this youngish Hispanic lad that looked at us and for some reason we must have connected, not meaning me, but our entire group uh, in the back of my mind. Maybe I think that at one point he was an altar boy. Uh, at one time he might have been active in church and he had probably fallen away from that experience because many people do once they come out. They get rid of those chains that had bound them all those years, telling them that they're worthless human beings. And he saw us and he saw the clergy walking with us. At the time, I was a layperson. And he looked over and we were waving and he gave this little sheepish, sad but longing little cup of his hand like this. Well, inside my soul, I wanted to reach out and just hug him to death to say, you are okay. You have self-worth. Do not feel ashamed for who you are. Who you are is a blessing. Well, unbeknownst to me at that time, the Holy Spirit was active because after I thought about that experience, I became convinced, and I'm still convinced, that in that young man, I saw the face of Christ. And the face of Christ, along with the Holy Spirit, said to me, you've got to do something to reach out to those people that have been estranged from a Christian body of people that are normally seen as nasty and mean and hateful. Well, that experience ended with our first National Coming Out Day service about a year later. So that was entirely a Pentecost Holy Spirit moment. And of course, as I've said before, we have uh, introduced and reintroduced the church close to 2,000 people over the years, people that had not set foot in a church in 20 or 30 years came to our service that we did yearly. Now the second time, uh, was quite interesting. Uh, I was part of the uh, LA West Hollywood Pride March. And over the years, we would get various numbers of people marching. Some years we'd have 50 of us from across the diocese. Other times we'd have 100. Well, this year, for some reason, we had close to 200 marchers representing all of the churches in the Diocese of Los Angeles. And the theme for that year was love. Well, here we were uh, behind a big float, and all of us had the same sign that said love on it. If you've ever marched in a parade, sometimes it gets backed up. You have to stop, and you have to wait until the flow starts again. So it turned out, as we were marching down the street, 200 of us with our float, uh, we came to a stop right in front of that quote-unquote Christian group spewing hate. All of us wondered what we were going to do. And with 200 people, uh, there's no way to set something up ahead of time uh, as to what our response would be if we were stuck in front of the group that was shouting at us. And here's where the Holy Spirit took a hold. Now imagine this. 200 of us are standing there for a long time. Maybe 
a minute or two goes by and they're still shouting at us, yelling, you're going to hell, you're not Christian, you're part of Satan. And it was almost on cue. No one told us verbally to do this, but 200 of us quietly turned and raised our signs that said love to those people screaming at us and we quietly stood there. Much to our surprise, that was right where the uh, press uh, was situated. Of course, they're looking for confrontation between these two groups and they snapped all of these pictures of us quietly standing facing them with our love signs and we made at least one of the sections of the LA Times, maybe the Metro, we made uh, uh, the cover of that particular uh, Sunday or Monday edition after the parade. We got some great press coverage because of that. In fact, I think our group won an award that year, uh, some sort of theme award. It was quite, quite exciting. But my point is, that was the Holy Spirit at work amongst us. It was quite thrilling. And it really shows um, what Leonardo Boff or John Serbino, one of the great liberation theologians, who once said that the Holy Spirit only works in groups. So I wish all of my brothers and sisters who feel like marching this year, please go out and do so. And hopefully the Holy Spirit will come upon you, come upon your group, and you can spread some of that L-O-V-E dot to the rest of the world. Thank you very much and see you next month where I'm going to start a very two-part, special two-part episode. It all began with a post I read on Facebook in Episcopalians on Facebook, something that I belong to on that social media site. And someone said, I think I'll become a deacon. And that got me thinking. So I'll see you next month as we talk about discernment. Until then, talk to you later.